Now, many of the young men who fought here had unique talents that went beyond war. Some were great sportsmen, some were academically gifted, some were brilliant musicians, like the man who wrote a symphony for a mate killed on the battlefield here. 100 years later, that music will echo across this peninsula. Here's Paul Caddock with a story about the symphony written in the trenches. Music in memory of a friend. So peaceful, it's hard to imagine it came to life on the battlefields of Gallipoli. When one plays this piece, this story fills our hearts as much as the music does. Its composer was Frederick Septimus Kelly, an Australian who enlisted in Britain's Royal Naval Division with English poet Rupert Brooke. But just before landing at Gallipoli, Brooke died suddenly from blood poisoning. As his friends went to bury him under moonlight, Kelly heard the wind in the olive trees. And this. And that goes over and over through his mind for six weeks of the campaign. As bullets flew and bombs exploded around him, Kelly writes this elegy for Rupert Brooke in his head. It was only after he was wounded and while recuperating could he put it to paper. There's a lot of musicians who write music in World War I, but he might have written the most in the front lines. Returning to battle, he began composing a sonata for friend and famous violinist Yeli Duranyi. It's very smiling music, so... a gift from him to her yeah. and you know she would have really loved to have married him written while sheltering in his dugout and he basically sits at the small desk with a candle writing music all the time everybody laughing at him thinking it's you know that it's a very eccentric thing to do right the Royal Naval Division is in this area then next to the valley of death it's, it's on this battlefield that this music is being composed being created specifically there right <laughs> Chris Latham searched for three years to find this original copy of the sonata, Feared Lost. That's his handwriting. And you see these numbers here, that's Yelly's. She even she, 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 cuts and things like she's that. She's done some changes yeah, for she, it. That's, that's musicians do. It and yeah, Kelly had faded from Australia's music history. A Sydney boy, a rowing Olympic gold medalist, but his talents blossomed in England. The English say, well, he's a colonial, and the Australians say, well, he's largely English. He's not on the wall of the War Memorial because he serves with the Royal Naval Division. In his music, he found his escape from the horrors around him. I think it is an oasis in the end for him. It's a place he can go where he can, in a way, become himself again. A place others found too, in the Australian trenches, Sergeant Ted McMahon was known for playing his trumpet. One time, as he played, the gunfire dwindled from both the Anzac and Turkish lines until it stopped. At the conclusion, there was a tremendous burst of applause from all listeners, including those in the trenches above us. Music silenced the guns at Gallipoli. It's just a tiny little bit of nurture, and everybody just stops to hear. Frederick Kelly would never get to hear this. His elegy for a string orchestra performed the way he intended. The year after he finished writing it, he was killed in action on the Western Front while leading a charge on a German machine gun post. It wouldn't be until after the war an orchestra would perform his piece at a concert in his memory. The last thing he writes is the part for the harp. Frederick Kelly seemed to know his time was running out. I think everybody knows the casualty rates at the Somme. They knew what they had to do and they knew that a lot of them weren't coming back. The Australian Chamber Orchestra telling the story in its reflections on Gallipoli. It's the music that really, really, you know, gets inside you. And lives long after the guns 
fall silent. Paul Kadak, 7 News.